This is COGS, where we learn about cognitive science. Hello, everybody. So today, I want to talk about embodied cognition. In particular, how that relates to affordances and offloading cognition. Embodied cognition is basically the idea that, yes, we have, you know, these little pink think tanks up inside of our skulls, but we also have these cool, crazy things called limbs, and that our bodies are an integral part to how we conceive of the world and perceive. This idea may seem kind of obvious to those of us who were not part of the cognitive science field. You know, I have a body that's obviously going to affect how I think. That's how I, you know, receive input from the world. Duh. But there was sort of a lot of philosophical debate initially about whether, like, what if, you know, you had a, a human brain, but just kind of in a pool or whatever. Could it think? You know, if you think about it, the reason why we are able to think is because we have input from the outside world that gives us stuff to think about. I think that it's really cool how as, you know, as a child, you are getting all of this input and stimulus and that essentially organizes your brain. Your brain would have no purpose were it not for the stimuli that it is was trying to process. The regions of the brain are not actually predetermined. It's more that the different brain areas are structured, just happen to be good at doing those things. In particular, if we think about language, we had to develop that. So that means that the part of our brain that is used for language, namely Broca's area and Wernicke's area, those two areas were not specifically created for the use of language. They just happen to be used for that. And this is where people like Noam Chomsky come in. Noam Chomsky came up with the idea of a language acquisition device. Essentially, he believed that there's no way that a child could acquire language unless they already had some kind of mental device that was pre-prepped in order to receive a language. So he's spent a lot of time searching for universal grammar, hoping to find that there is some kind of universal base device that all humans in the world use in order to cr like create language essentially. This has mostly been unsuccessful. We have found that language uses words and some kind of rules. There really is no universal grammar. And so that's sort of my main issue with Noam Chomsky. He's still kind of on that train, you know, hard charger. So because of all of that stuff, like thinking that everything is pre-programmed and it's like those pre-made houses that you suddenly put together, you know, in like two days or something. No, that's not how the brain is. The brain is a house that you construct from the ground up. I wouldn't make a joke about top down or bottom up processing, but no one would get it. So embodied cognition was kind of a response to this idea of the brain being kind of pre-made and it's like, no, 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 no. We are not pre-made, we are put out into the world and we have these bodies and because of how we interact with the world, our cognition is kind of formed around that. Sometimes embodied cognition goes into like how our specific anatomy leads to the kinds of things that we can do. And in particular, humans are fairly distinct in our ability to create tools and language, all that good stuff that, that makes us such an exciting species. One of the things that is kind of related to that is affordances. So an affordance is just a usage of an object based on our ability to interact with it. So for instance, this book has certain affordances to it based on my hand shape. I can open it with a hand because it has edges. I can grab it with my fingers. I can turn the pages. I can hold it like this with the bottom of my hand because I have a large flat palm and I can read it with my eyes because I have vision. And because of Gestalt principles, I can tell the black text from the white background. Thus that gives me the ability to read essentially, plus a bunch of other stuff. This teacup has the affordance of being able to be grabbed because of its handle. It fits into my palm and I can drink from it because it has a rim. So if you're trying to design an object, you want to keep in mind the ways that a person is going to be interacting with it. And, and you want to provide ways for people to interact with the object that you have in a way that is intuitive to them based on their abilities because of their bodies. We all have 10 fingers, five on each hand. We have these large palms. We also have like arms that have certain degrees of movement. Based on all of these characteristics of our bodies, thus we can interact with objects in specific ways. 
ways. Another aspect of embodied cognition is offloading cognition. Basically offloading means you are taking something that would be an internal mental task and you are giving it a physical form outside of your brain. Offloading cognition a lot of times is just using our hands. Counting is one of the most obvious versions of offloading. I can keep track of numbers using my fingers. Offloading is really important when we have a task that is too hard for us to just do inside of our heads. We can only hold so much information in our heads at one time. Offloading allows us to essentially extend our mental space so that we can hold more more material. I will talk about working memory in a later video. Stay tuned. Uh, there are several studies that have looked at offloading and solving math problems. When someone is allowed to offload while performing math, they have a much easier time doing it and perform better. When they're specifically prohibited from offloading, they have a, hard, a harder time. Uh, solving math problems. Offloading also can kind of be extended to gestures. Gestures help us communicate. And if someone is prohibited from using gestures, they often have a harder time communicating whatever it is that they are. Since if I was to sit on my hands and try to explain offloading to you, I'd have a very difficult time. Offloading is also really important when you are, for instance, note taking. You are taking internal thoughts and you are putting them into the physical world through your notes. The act of offloading via a pencil is much more embodied than typing with your fingers, which is kind of... So whenever you're doing mental tasks, try to keep offloading in mind. It really can help in a lot of situations. Leaving notes for yourself is, is another way of offloading. Using your phone is a way of offloading. Saying words out loud is a way of offloading. There are lots of ways that we can take all of this mental problem solving that's going on and put it out into the physical world in order to help us. And because of our ability to interact with the world, uh, because of, so because we have, you know, embodied cognition and our cognitive processes is dependent on our bodies and how we interact with things, thus we have things like affordances, objects that allow us to interact with them in certain ways, and we have cognitive offloading, which allows us to take our internal mental state and processes and put them out into the world. So just two things to keep in mind when you are thinking about thinking. Thanks for watching. We'll have a new episode maybe in a couple weeks, maybe next week. Who knows? I certainly don't. See you guys next time.